thing here. Thank you so much, Zoom. And I hope you guys are all doing well, having a phenomenal week, and also gearing up for Shabbos Kodesh Vesiyat Rishmaya. What a privilege, Mamish, what a privilege. And like I mentioned last week, we're going to be primarily focusing this year on the Torah of the Tash Rebbe, Bezer Hashem, the new series called Tash Torah, the Tash Torah series with Meaningful Minute will be beginning today. They're going to be sending out uh, these very highly professionally produced, beautiful, beautiful videos every week um, via all of their channels specifically. So it's not going to be sent in LPI, but if you are interested in receiving them, you can check them out on Instagram and on the Meaningful Minute app. And uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, wait, wait for this week's Tara. And so you can get all you can get all of that on 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 their um, on their channels. So that's starting today. But in this series of Shiurim, and I want to thank our anonymous sponsor Dafka for this series. We're going to be focusing on the Tyras to learn them inside. Those are like five minute videos, three minute videos, short encapsulation of you know just a small little idea, big ideas, but communicated in a short period of time, while these Shi'ir and Hashem allow us to delve much more deeply into these Hasagos, to go through them slowly but surely. And much like I mentioned last week, and for this week, it, it's really true. I, I, I mentioned that, you know, so much of the beauty of the Tasha Rebbe's Torah specifically is this element of the practicality of it, that ultimately it enables us to go ahead and to, it enables us, sorry about that, it enables us to go ahead and really genuinely tap into an idea, but not just on a theoretical or theological level, but to be able to take it and make it very, very practical. And sometimes that comes across in a way of Musar, even though it's Hasidus, we're going to see that. Sometimes it comes across in the way of, you know, a little bit strong and a little bit sharp. And I think that it's so unique because it comes across with all the sweetness of who the Tasha Rebbe was. And with the whole Taurus of Al Shem Tev, you know, that's at the very foundation of everything that he was teaching. And so it goes in, it goes in. But we have to make ourselves strong. We have to be aware that this was his Mahalach. And I find it for me to be very helpful because all the chizik and all the, it's wonderful and it's good and it's true and it's necessary and we need it all. But sometimes, especially in a Shas Aliyah, right after the Yom Narayim, it's, uh, you know, we can handle it. We can handle it. And so this piece is no exception. On the contrary, it's a very good example of this. So let's, without further ado, jump right into it. I'm just going to share my screen so we can see the Tzaddik's words together. Okay, so we should be able to see the Taira. And this is the fourth Sicha in Sefer Avodas HaKodesh or Avodas HaKodesh or Avodat HaKodesh wherever you are and wherever you're from and however you feel comfortable pronouncing it. So this is the fourth discourse in Parshas Noah. And the tzaddik says like this, what a privilege to learn this with you. Thank you for being with me. And with us, says the Yilgit tzaddik, in the beginning of the parsha, the Pasuk tells us, Kate's called Basar Balafanai. But as Baruch Hu tells Nayach, it's the end. It's Mamish, the end. The first parish on the Torah is the beginning of the world, as Barash is Barali Kim, is how everything got started. And already one parish later, it's like, you couldn't make this stuff up. You know, it's not, it's not even like, like this is literally the Torah. It's like things were going well for a very limited period of time. And then boom, like everything went haywire. And Akkadosh Baruch was already destroying his world. It's like, you couldn't wait till parish is Lech Lecha, you know? No, right away. Nayach, boom, done. Game over, right? And that's what's happening. This puzzle. It's the end. Perish Rashi Akadosh, the Hilgazisa Rashi, Schusi Agamalinu says the following thing. I'm just going to try to yeah, make the words a little bit bigger here. One second. The Hilga Rashi says like this: Kol Makam Shatamoit is Nusav Adizara. Any place that a person finds immorality, Avodizara, uh, idol worship. Adril Musia Bala Oilam, some sort of disaster is going to visit upon the world. And it sweeps up both those that are good and both those that are not good. And that's the Midas Hadin that ultimately comes down and manifests itself in everybody's life. Lato for the ultimate level. Kigavar Aleinu Chazdoi that any of the Kodesh was Gvura is ultimately for the level of Chazdoi. Oilam Chesigibana with all of the Oilam and the Helam that we spoke about last week. That's all part of it. That's true. But there's a Midas Haddin in the world that's triggered by egotistical behavior that comes in the expression of either Znos or Avodah Zarah. And that's what Rashi tells us essentially happened with the Mabel. 
is that there was a great deal of this kind of rampant immorality. The Zara, there was a tremendous amount of idol worship and a lack of focus on the creator of the world and, you know, a, uh, a, a focus on created beings and, and, and an and a idol, idolization of them. And that caused a disaster that swept up Toivim Virayim. But the next Pasik says, Ki mala arts chamas mi and in the later Pasik, a few seconds later, says that the world had been had become filled with chamas, which is thievery. And Parish Rashi Akadish, Rashi says, and again, although previously Rashi had told us that ultimately what causes a disaster and the scope or magnitude of the Mabel, Znus and Avadizara, but over here Rashi says something else. No, Loi Nechtam Gzar Hadin or Gzar Dinam, the ultimate. Uh, you know, decree wasn't nechtam, wasn't sealed, ela ala gezel, except for gezel. Thievery, stealing. The Diktuka Amafarshim and the Hedigam Amafarshim analyze this and they say, Hare Devi Rashi Akdoshim Nurkasaisrim. It looks like Rashi is being so, sir, himself. It looks like Rashi is, is uh, contradicting himself. Because the first day, the Gapasik says, that it seems that what causes a disaster, the magnitude of the Mabel to come to the world and swipe and sweep up and, and, and wipe away, afterwards he says, no, it was Gezel that was Nechtam Zardin. You just told me earlier that it was because of that a disaster comes to the world. So what is it about Gezel that was so much stronger that the Gzardin was Nechtam on this element of Gezel? This is the premise of the question in the Diktuk of the Mepharshim. And again, we need to make ourselves strong. It's a little bit, you know, it shakes us up a little bit. Explain Every single morning we say, Hello, Kai, Master of the World, Father in Heaven, our best friend in Shamayim, Nishama Shanasatabi Tahiri. The soul that you gave me is pure. What a sentence. The soul that you gave me is pure. Essentially pure. Atta Barasa, you created it, Ati Yatsarti, you formed it. Ata nefachta be you have blown it within me. Viatam meshamer bikirbi and you guard it and watch it within me. She usually is boiling in harba b'diburim elu. He says there's so much reason to really focus very very strongly on all of these words. Hecha kadosh baruch hu berich chaz devet tuvai. How the master of the world and his incredible mercy and kindness is chasid ima adam does so much chesed with each and every one of us. So he read nishama kadosha and he implants within us a holy soul. No matter what we do, it can't take away. It can cover over maybe, but it cannot absolutely impact and dis distort and, uh, and, and blemish this essentially holy being, which is a chelik elok mal, right? Which is a portion of, of God above, kibiyachal, so to speak, or a godly portion. And a Kodesh Baruch implants it within a physical body. In order to enable us and to grant us the great merit of connecting ourselves to the Torah and Mitzvahs in this world to use the body much like a driver uses the car as a way to get around, right? And essentially we're a soul and the soul is in this cumbersome thing called a body and that's why babies find it so awkward to move around because they're just not used to it. It's like an astronaut putting on a space suit, you know, it's, not, it's, it's very clumsy and it takes some time and then we become convinced that we're all about the goof and that's what we spoke about last week in the Indian of Bara vis-a-vis -vis the Indian of Yatsar, Yatsar Asher, Yatsar Esa Adam Chachma. But beyond that, the ultimate reason that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did this is to give us a body to enable us to perform mitzvahs maisiyas and in so doing to elevate every single aspect of the physical realm and all the mitzvahs through maisa, through machshava with our physical brains and our mouths in the Indian of Dibur, Dibur the Kedusha, the words of Tyra, the words of Tefillah, famously the Baal Shem HaKadosh said that the Teva of Noah wasn't simply an ark, but the Teva of Noah represents and symbolizes each and every word of Torah and Tefillah that we learn. And so when HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Noah, is a very famous Tyra, Boy Ela Teva, come into the Teva, this means for each and every one of us, for you and I today, Boy Ela Teva, that we're not simply expected to read words off a page, but we're expected to enter into those words. We're expected to make ourselves at home in these words, like the Pasik says, Kinim Tase Sateva, and the Berdichev says, and Sparks on Berdichev, Parshas Nayach, that's one of the pieces over there, to make our home, it should be our nest in the Teva of Torah and Tfila, Kinim Tase Sateva. That's why our Kurdish Baruch Hu gifted us with this Neshama 
That through this, a person can tap into that incredible spirit of Olam Haba while still in this world and then eternally enjoy that portion of closeness with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. That's the purpose. Before HaKadosh Baruch Hu sends the soul into the world and before the person is born, HaKadosh Baruch Hu does an incredible kindness with each and every one of us. That we believe that in the womb, on whatever level, there's a malach that's teaching the child, Kalatara Kula, the fetus, Kalatara Kula, Kedei, Shabakoya Halima Razeh, that through this primordial learning of Tyra, even before the birth happens into this world, Kedei, that through this, Shabakoya Halima Razeh, Yuchala Hasik is a Tyra, the Kayam is a Tyra, Mitzvah. Through this, after having already absorbed the entirety of Torah within our souls, we're going to find the power somehow and the ability to overcome the Yitzhar, if not all the time, then most of the time, and not most of the time, then some of the time. But it's all because of that preface, of that learning. So a person can go ahead and a person can fulfill the mission for which you and I were sent down into this world. And it's a mission. We're not just here, Stam. Each and every one of us is on, a, is on an epic, historically glorious mission. That we're part of the Jewish nation that existed from the very beginning of time, before the beginning of time, not for our own individual perfection to achieve godless and to achieve Tikkun Adam. Of course, that's true. But you and I are connected to a glorious story. We're the end of that story. We're the last chapter. We're the afterward. We're already, we're already leading into the appendices. You know, it's like, a, you know, the Olama, you know, the, the Elif and, 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 and so on, the Yom Shukulay Yomtiv, the Yom Shukulay Purim, like that Rizal says. But we're here for a reason. We're here to do something incredible, each and every one of us, in our own regular lives. That Superman cape on our, on, our, on our backs, just being regular. We have no idea of what we're accomplishing and what we're doing. So he says, Now that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has done such incredible kindnesses with us, how is it possible or feasible or imaginable? That when a person is born, and a person grows up a little bit, and a person starts, like we mentioned, to get used to this thing called the body, and to get used to this thing called time, and to get used to this thing called space. I think that one of the reasons that children are so very impatient, did you notice? Children are so impatient, they cannot wait for anything. Everything has to be right now, right now, right now, right now. They don't have that concept of patience. And I think perhaps one of the reasons for this might be that children are much closer to a realm that's Lamalam and Azman than you and I are. And in Lamalam Azman, the concept of patience doesn't exist. There is no needing to wait. There's no time. Time necessitates waiting because it's not now, it's in 10 minutes. But if you come from a place, Lamalam Azman, so of course everything has to be right now. So it's an effect of the holiness and the spirituality of these neshamas that they cannot wait for things because it's a frustration for them. But as we get older... And as we lose the princess, and we move from youth, from, from youth to adulthood, as is explicated in the first chapter of the, of the book, the, of the story of our lives, that really sits at the foundation of all these tires and of everything that we're teaching and giving over with the help of the master of the world. As we get older and we get used to this thing called life, we wander, Achar Shriris Levi into a place that is completely and entirely antithetical, certainly not helpful for our mission. Lamalas Taiva's gufa to fulfill the pleasures of the body, do you know what kind of pain? Do I know what kind of pain? Do we know what kind of pain we're causing to the soul? Shemesh Abdaliyah's Eved, Al Taiva's gufa, and we posted Mamish just yesterday, this incredible quote from the Heligama Emeashi Loach, that that's what freedom is, to do whatever we want. Do you know what kind of slavery that is? Do we know that there's no bigger slavery than a person who does whatever the body wants, that the real you and the real me, that's the neshama, is in chains by that, and that's called freedom? Give me a break. There's no bigger slavery than that. Ezuhu Gibar, that's what it means to be a gibar. That's what it means to be a, a free person, a free man. Is to become a Kaddish Baruch who's evid at our Sinai. And that's the way that we break out of the chains of Mitzrayim, of Mitzaram, of, of the Indian of, of Erevas Haaretz. That's the freedom. I'll take Don't write 
Don't read it rather that the luchais, that the Aseris Adibras were etched into the luchais. Chazal say, Elochairus ala luchais. This is freedom. Freedom. Can't do this, can't do that, can't do this, can't do that. That's freedom. Guess what? It's a guideline for the body to begin to live in accordance with the deepest desire of the soul. That's called freedom. So the person causes the neshama a tremendous amount of pain. To be a slave to this kind of behavior. How can a person be such a kafoi toiv? To have such so little gratitude. To appreciate like, you know, what we have. Now, I would argue that the overwhelming majority of people that act in such a way and the overwhelming majority of the time that you and I act this way because we're human beings is because either we were never taught or we lose touch with the realization of who I really am, right? But a person that lives in this kind of consciousness, how could it be? That a person would be to rebel against and to deny the incredible, incredible, glorious nature of what it is to be a Jew. He says, it's thievery. We are stealing from a Kaddish Baruch Hu. There's a Kaddish Baruch Hu put into us funds. And if it's not material funds, and it blesses us all that we should experience financial security and never have to worry. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us tremendous spiritual funds. And we are misappropriating those funds when we use them for the purposes of the guf instead of using the guf for the purposes of the nisham. It's a misappropriation. It's a form of gezem. Hari goizel bezeh HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The goizel man and a It's a form of thievery from the soul. It's a tainu gashab lahasik because it can have pleasure in this world. A lot of it. And guess what? Through that, the body also has pleasure also. But level number one is that the soul can have awesome, awesome pleasure in this world. The Hasidic masters didn't really speak so much about the next world. That's for sure true. Olam HaShamr is the world of Tainu, the Zivashchina, in this world, in this world already. Tremendous, tremendous Tainu. And when a person refuses that to the soul, that's called Gezel. So the Acher is born in a zoo after a person really focuses on this and thinks about this elemental idea. Yavana Adam, a person can understand. This is so foundational. Ki that whatever sin, we don't like to say sin, whatever deviation from the will of a Kaddish Baruch, or whatever step off from the straight and narrow of what we really want, from you know, what, what, whatever you know, deviation for a moment of our deepest innermost desire, no matter what that hate is, Lashon Hara, a person looks in a place he shouldn't look, a person eats something he shouldn't eat, says something he shouldn't say, and so on and so forth. Nichlo boy gam is her geza. No matter what that hate is and how far removed it is from stealing, but there's an aspect of stealing there too. Shegoizel is a Kaddish Baruch Hu and Hashem, like we explained, because he's stealing from Hashem Baruch Hu and he's stealing from the soul. This is the greatest form of thievery. That can awaken, Rahman al Tzlan, even to say, Rahman al Tzlan, it can awaken Kharon Af in a person's life. It can awaken divine anger, frustration, Midas Adin, Yoisirman Etzamachet, even more than the actual transgression that a person is doing. The aspect of Gezel in the Chet has a, has a bigger effect and a stronger effect on high. Because the, the Shekhin is in tremendous pain from this. That a person is completely denying all the kindness that a Kodesh Baruch was doing for him. Certainly, in the area of immorality, without a question, there's Shefa that's flowing down that can become life, that can become life, that ability that we have whether it's a physiological thing for males, whether it's the, the ability to be able to use these capacities that humans have to bring life to the world. And a person takes that and utilizes those capacities in a way, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whatever it is, but utilizes that for the purposes of the ego, for the purposes, purposes of the body of gross, physical, tangible pleasure for no reason. Nothing's for free. Nothing's stam. There's not one extra detail in this world. Nothing's for free. 
And through that, it goes to goes to a different place. The certainly in an element of, of idol worship, you're stealing, not you. We are steal. I'm stealing. A person can steal from a Kodesh Baruch who created the world like we saw last week. And that's why there's a bara, like we saw, like we talked about. That's why there's an element of darkness, of a void. So that we can reveal him in this world. And instead we go ahead and add Hester onto Hester. Goizel. Gezel. We're utilizing the Koach Habriah. Now we can understand that it's deeper than, you know, simply the, you know, the, the forces in creation. But the Koach Habria, a person is utilizing this stage that's been set to reveal God, which is Bria, which is void, which is Bara, Bari, Chayshech, like we learned last week, Bara, this pit, this empty space. Instead, to add on to that Hester by covering it over with ego on top of ego, and to serve a stone and to serve physicality. Again, it's hard to find a greater form of thievery than this. Nimsa, we find. That what Rashi tells us, that their hate that caused the Mabel was what? Gezel, I'm sorry, was Nusva Abedazara, which was immorality and idol worship. And then in the second Rashi, Shechet Abi Gezel, who explains that the Mabel came because of Gezel, it's one and the same. It's not a contradiction. It's one and the same. Because within and the premise of an activity that's involved in the element of immorality or it wasn't that they were also stealing. They were stealing by virtue of their immorality. They were stealing by virtue of their idol worship. That was a gezel. That was a gezel. They were stealing the, the, the holy bounty that's supposed to bring life force to the world, that's supposed to bring another yid to the world, that's supposed to bring an ashama to the world, something kadosh, and they use that for something else. With goizel, the goizel, baruch of us, and ashama, they were stealing from God, they were stealing from the soul. Like we learn, it was that chalik, hagezel in the chait of immorality and in the chait of idol worship. That's what it means. It was the gezel, it was the element of gezel within the element of idol worship and of immorality. That's what caused it because it's yoysim and etzim That brings about more din to the world even than the actual sin in and of itself. It's that that brought the mabel down to the world. Ella al hagezel hainu. You know what this means? That the decree wasn't sealed or was only sealed over gezel hainu. Ki chasimas hagzardin hoisa nachmas chelik hagezel shabachet znus babidazar. Pile plays. It's an unbelievable perspective. Unbelievable perspective. So deep. And now he brings it practical. Listen to this. Vilachain. Therefore, Kasher Oymer Mesed Ravidoy, when all of us go ahead and we clap al Chet for those of us who daven as Sfard, when there's Tachnun. So every day we're clapping al Chet. And for those of us who are davening Nusach Ashkenaz, so during Slichas and Elul and Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, not Rosh Hashanah, but Yom Kippur, Ashamnu Baganu, and we say Gazalnu, we stole. Person has to be much more broad minded than simply assessing did I steal from someone? I, I never stole something. And if I stole something, I'm going to return it right away. It's much more than that. What's Gazalnu? To daven and to cry over this. Because each and every person has a tremendous, tremendous relationship with thievery. Even if he never took one thing that didn't belong to him. And a person goes through it because, okay, it's part of the Sidra Avidu, but I have nothing to do with Gezel. It's not true. It's not true. But if a person will assess his or her actions and behavior, you're a person will seek the whole yoyim. Because that's what a chait is, it's to steal. And if it's not stealing, it's stealing, and there are thievery. There is three thievery in the realm of that's the classical thievery, to steal something, to take someone something, to steal someone's car. But there's also a thievery and a thievery and a thievery 
Oy, they are hot gegazel in Yiddish. Whoa, has he stolen? Nish stam gegazel, nor gut gegazel. This is why you could really hear that the tzaddik is not chas v'shalom coming to beat us over the head. His heart was absolutely permeated and overflowing with the sweetness of the Rachel Darchin Noyam. And it comes from this place of realizing what it is to be a Jew. And it comes from this place of realizing just what potential we have and how sad it would be if we wasted it. Listen to these words again in Yiddish, even if you don't understand Yiddish. Could you hear the sweetness? Oh, Yvei, Erhot Gegazel. Nish Stam Gegazel. But he didn't just steal. Nor Gut Gegazel. He's just stealing goodness. He's stealing holiness. Not someone else's wallet. Nor Gut Gegazel. When a person looks in a place where a person is not allowed to look, that's also thievery. Because that's not why the koach of vision was given to a person. That's an element of thievery. And the Gemara Baba Basra says, Hezek re'iya shmei hezek. That we pass in that there is a concept of hezek re'iya of a person's makbed, that a person shouldn't look into his field. You're not allowed to look into his field. Why? Because hezek re'iya shmei hezek. There's such a thing that there's a mitzias in the world that even looking at something could, could, have, a, could have a negative and detrimental impact. When a person looks in such a place, that's an inin of gazela. That wasn't why eyesight was given to you. If a person thinks thoughts that are usher to think, a person thinks hate, hateful thoughts, angry thoughts, anxious thoughts, depressing thoughts. That's also called a little bit of thievery. That wasn't why the power of thought was given to me and you. If a person uses his physical body in such a way of egotism, this is the greatest form of gazela, like we learned. To take something that has the potential to bring holiness into the world, and to send it direct on a direct train to the other to the other side. And from this, he's stealing away from this binion of kedusha that ain't ben david ba. That Mashiach only comes when all the souls, all the holy souls of Am Yisrael are, are going to be brought into the world and born into the world. Listen to this. If a person doesn't go ahead and utilize the platform of parenthood, and today it's very delicate, and a person needs to be with big seichel, big, big, big seichel. I was misvoining today. I was thinking to myself, probably. I don't have statistical proof to back this up, but probably 80% of rules, I can speak certainly for the school systems, they are simply counterproductive. Think of it. Think of it. Schools have rules. I'm lucky enough to teach in a yeshiva of Sion, who are much more lax, you know, in, 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 in these areas and whose guys are, I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. It's in the modern Orthodox sector, right, which is great and phenomenal. It's a different approach. But I grew up in the more, quote unquote, Haredi, but that doesn't exist in America, the more right wing sort of yeshiva systems. And it's like, no, you know, because I, I was thinking today, all these guys are walking around with their smartphones and WhatsApp. And in yeshivas, like everyone had it, but nobody was allowed to be seen with it. So instead of walking in the hallway, you couldn't find a stall to use the bathroom if you needed to, because every single place not only had one or two guys in there crouched over watching movies on screens this big, but it was, it was, it was ridiculous. So what do you accomplish exactly? What do you accomplish? Why are you making rules like this? If they are counterproductive, is there a better way? And so a person needs a lot of seichel in the way of chinuch to know how to speak to children, to know how to speak, to know how to, to know, to know how, to, how to build a holistic relationship where a word that needs to come across in a way of guidance will come across already in the context of a loving relationship that's been built over the 99.999% of positive interactions instead of a whole relationship with a kid being about criticism, 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 and then maybe one time you pat him on the back when he gets an A++ and say, hey, good job. You know, it doesn't go this way. So a person needs a lot of seichel, and I bless us with that seichel. But if a person is not mesim leiv lechanech as bonavu benoisel, al derech atoyer vahayir, and a person just doesn't care about it and shirks the obligation off his shoulder, vein ena bekiich al bonav sheyatzlich b'limudayim, and he takes this attitude of just not caring about how our kids are engaging in Yiddishkeit, and I do not mean 
I apologize. I'm just going to plug in my, my laptop one second. Sorry about that. And I do not mean on a quantitative level to make sure that they're getting good marks and so and, you know, and, and, and so on and so forth, but on a qualitative level. To be able to really be in touch and in tune, like I told my guys this morning, a member from Rabbi Amager Shlito says this, and he's so strong and it's so true. He says the first Shabbos that a from kid breaks is not the first Shabbos he didn't keep. The first Shabbos that a from kid breaks and he goes into his room and he locks the door and he pulls out his phone is not the first Shabbos he didn't keep means to say that it's only an indicator that there was something broken a very long period of time ago. If Shabbos means so little to a person that without any very intense trauma or anything like that, not precluding the possibility that people go through things, and they certainly do, what happened here? So what was Shabbos for your kid? What was it and what is it for our kids? So a person who doesn't care, if a person cares and things happen, okay, so we have to understand that there are so many multifarious factors, but parents need to care and they need to not simply let the schools be mechanech. Chinuch, the essence of chinuch starts at home. I say primarily from the mothers, but it primarily starts at home. Mecha, Gemara to make sure that they're that they're being and they're learning. And he explains and he and he, and he sort of shirks responsibility. He says, What do you want from me? I'm only one person. I can't spread myself too thin. I'm trying to put food on the table and so on and so forth. This is called thievery from your children. It's a pellet because a person is doing this so that he can physically feed his children while starving them spiritually. And every second and moment that a person was supposed to have gone ahead and be mechanic, and I want to get this across a thousand times, that the chinuch does not necessarily mean, hey, come to the dining room table, let's learn something. Chinuch means, hey, let me sit on the floor with you and play the board game with you for an hour. That's also chinuch. That's also part of it. The Torah scroll is not just a Torah scroll in and of itself. It can't be touched on its own. It needs to be lifted with wooden, with wooden poles. Everything holy needs wooden poles. It needs the mundanity of that thing that will enable us to grab hold of it. Chinuch is no different. So there need to be wooden poles. There needs to be a context of a relationship built solely and exclusively outside the context of religion, just on the level of father-son mutual respect relationship. Then, once the context and the kli has been created, I'll be a lot more open to coming and sitting with and learning with you when he, when he realizes it's not about you trying to control or overreach or it's something else. It's another way that he can connect with the father that he loves, right? So the whole shava reka shayla lim salaman chin chaban of and he didn't do this gazal azman azami banam, that's thievery. And, it, and, in, and if they're going to be lacking, like it's, you know, it's, again, I, I don't usually like speaking this way, but there's that Sadik's Derek, it's sort of his fault, right? It's sort of his fault. And the same goes for teachers, and, 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 and those that are giving over Shirim, that have been appointed from heaven to go ahead and to get involved in this holy way. Needs to give himself over all of him to every single student like it was his child. And to give over all of his power and all of his strength into their students. She is that they should grow into big people, into big people. And a person is going to be misrape. A person is going to go ahead and let go. There's a Nanach van driving back, or driving past. Welcome to your Shalim. So that might be the sound that you hear. But um, but but I'm a spot to be malachtai. I'm a srape rather be a person who doesn't engage with this strongly. That's withholding good from its owner, like the Pasig Mishli says, but Goizel as Al Tamid. And that's an element of thievery as well. And he doesn't go through all of these, but he's just giving examples. 
in every area of life, when we're not manifesting the potential, not our personal potential, but the potential for which we were sent to this world to serve, not ourselves, but the master of heaven and earth, and to step up like a soldier in an army, to be able to bind ourselves with all generations past in a glorious enterprise, not necessarily on paper that everybody can see, wow, we did this, that, and the other thing, the regular, the regular, the regular, you know, like just like Superman with, you know, without the cape, like Clark Kent, you know, that's mamish how it is. The regular brachas that we make, the regular tefillas that we dive in, and the regular kiddush Hashem that we try to make, and the regular tikkun amidas, and so on and so forth. Aimless shire, what we can do, what we need to do, what we must do, and when we don't, it's an Indian of Gezel. Kugan Bachar Yeshiva, he says, like a student in Yeshiva, Asher Mariv Ben Avshi, live with Gezel with Akanas Yeshiva, a person who's just not interested in any of the rules, and again, they need to be rules with Chachma that are realistic. Kugan Akanas Lachedra, Shein and Shachavera, in his Yeshiva, they had a very strong rule, and it shows up a number of times not to go into another person's room. Obviously, they were trying to prevent certain, you know, unpleasant things from taking place. But maybe in the oven, that seems pretty clear for Indian Kedusha. Not to go into the cheder ayishen. Neged at hakana she is she is sadnu be be um be his yastus ayishiva reu gazlin. That's called stealing. Kin nichnas legvul she ainish alai. That's also called stealing. The darich b'makom she nesser lav ledurich shami. You're stepping on a place where it's asher to step. V'chini yish oyda fanim and there are many other ways. Asher adam nichshu be isur zevul oyoydim. And a person doesn't even think about it. And a person says, "Oh, what did I do already? What did I do? What did I do?" Okay, it's a small little thing, but you don't realize that. I don't realize that within that deep within and inside is the union of gezel. That's chamor ad lema oyd lema oyd. Even if a person didn't take anything that belongs to somebody else, there's gezel there. A person's walking down the street and he finds something and a person says, ah, I can't bother with, you know, going ahead and trying to figure out who lost this thing. And a person keeps on walking. Despite the fact that a person is being and a person is over that a person is not allowed to simply keep on walking over. That's also called gazel. You didn't take it for yourself. You kept on walking. Gazel. Ki goizel is balaveda. That's a form of gazel as well. Why were you giving hands to pick this thing up and to go ahead and to give it back to the person who it belonged to? And if we don't do that, actually, it's not clear. It's not written down. It's not barur. But that element of thievery comes along with it. So many elements of being This element of leisigzol comes along with it. A person pains another person. Should never know from such a thing or ever see a person being pained by somebody. Certainly not children. And to stand on a mishmar, if there's one thing we teach our kids is chas v'shalom, chas milahaskir, to ever cause pain to another kid ever under any circumstances this should be the most important thing that we give over the bullying has zero makom and tolerance at all at all at all at all at all at all this is something to knock into our kids mamish 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 to care for other people's sarah to be emotionally sensitive and when a person pains somebody else it's not just busha and it's not just causing pain to another person, it's gezel. There's an element of gezel there as well. <laughs> to help somebody. <laughs> or to give someone chizik. All of us can do it. Speak to a person for a couple of minutes. Person's going to, you speak to somebody, give chizik. <laughs> to listen to someone, even just to listen, as we're going to see in a minute from this wondrous story that's worth the whole safer really for the story we're about to read together what a privilege what a privilege it's a little bit sharp but it's also sweet and it's also you know shakes us up a little bit it's like you know montreal was very cold you know i go into a cold mikvah that's 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 what's coming out of montreal it's warm but it's also shocks you a bit it certainly shocks me a person refused to, to, to do that. That is as well stealing something that belongs to his friend because the only reason that I have ears is to listen to somebody else's tzara. And if I refuse to do that, for whatever reason, whatever cheshbin, within reason, obviously, I can't spend the whole day, you know. Obviously, a person has to make cheshbonus. And with seichel, realistically, but if a person doesn't listen, he's stealing. He's stealing from his friend and he's stealing from himself, from his neshama. Listen to this story. 
When the Heligat Turizah, when the Heligat Taz left the city Lemberg and he traveled to the city of Krakow, Levaker, to visit his Chosne's father in law, Hagona Kodesh Bala Bach's Chosne, famously the Bach and the Taz, right? The two Baupluktas on Shulchan Aruch, the Bach and the Taz, and Archaim, ultimately, ultimately, ultimately were father in law and son in law. Imagine what that Shabbos table looked like. Imagine what that is, the Baal, you know, the, 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 the Taz and the Bach. So the Taz went to leave Lemberg and to travel to Krakow so that he could have a meeting and so that he could visit his father-in-law, the prestigious Bach. And at that time, the Bali Amuka, the Megali Amukas, was a big Mekobal. The Hasidim were so much Mechab, the Megali Amukas, unbelievable, unbelievable tires. So the Megali Amukas also lived in Krakow, in the city where the Bach lived. And the Taz leaves Lemberg and he comes to visit the Bach in Krakow. And in Krakow also lived the, the Megale Amukas Chusya Galeno Asher Aya Az Adain Avrich Tsar Liyamim, and at that point he was very young. An Avrich. The Kasher Igia Taz Liyir, when the Taz came to the city, obviously, Kiblu Kolbane Iyir as Pana Bechavda Ro'i. So, of course, you could imagine Sadik Balayir, and everybody comes forth, and they all want to greet him, and men, women, and children, everybody brushes forth to come and meet and to see and to catch a glimpse of the shining face of the Heligat Taz Chusya Galeno. But the Megali Amukas did not. He didn't go out to meet him. And when he passed by him in shul, he didn't ask, how are you? Good to see you. Ignored him. The Megali Amukas ignored the Taz on his visit to Krakow. They davened in the same shul. He didn't look at him. Everybody said, what's going on here? How, who does this Megali Amukas think he is? That he's going ahead and not recognizing the incredible stature and Torah in Yerushalayim of the person called the Taz, and he's ki'ilu pretending he's not here. What kind of Bizayana Torah is this? Until the leaders of the congregation got together and decided that they needed to somehow censor and, and, and punish censure and, and punish the, 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 the Megali Amukas because of this bizarre behavior. This is one of the Matzah Shabbos during this period of time. Yashvu or Yeshvu Tuve Akol. All the very prestigious members of the congregation sat down to have a meeting about this. To go ahead and to meet about this and to discuss what should be done. And they decided. And they decided. Can't make this stuff up. Lahachrim is Baal Megal Amukas to put him in Cherim. Because of this incredible breach, at least that's how they perceived it, this incredible breach in Kavarat At that time, at that very moment, while they're sitting there writing up and drafting, you know, this cheirum against the Megal Amukas, somebody came to him, Lahaskal of Devar Yeshua, to come and to ask for Yeshua, to ask for salvation for the Megal Amukas prayers. And the Megali Amukas said to this person, Go now to the Beis HaMedrish. You're going to walk in there and see that the most prestigious members of the congregation are writing a letter. Grab it from them and rip it. Rip it into shreds. And if you do this, you're going to merit to a salvation. Without asking a question, is what he did. It's not a geyser. He runs out to the base manager. He grabs it out of their hands, rips it up, runs out. So the Kim Chashtar Nikro, after the paper that they had spent time drafting up and writing and working on the exact lettering and wording and so on and so forth, after it was ripped up, they said, okay, okay, well, you know, what can we do? We'll try to sit down again tomorrow night. But it got pushed off and pushed off and pushed off and never ended up happening. After a few days had passed, then the Megali Amukas walked over to the Taz and he asked him, How are you? And he apologized about the behavior that he'd been acting toward the Taz in such a way of not really recognizing his presence at all or being the him. And he explained the reason. Listen to this. This is such a powerful story to take with you. 
He explained. He said, When you were leaving, said the Megala Mukas to the Taz, when you were leaving Lemberg to come visit Krakow, just like they came to greet you when you arrived in Krakow, when you were leaving Lemberg, the whole community came out, men, women, children. They were accompanying you, and among them was an Almana, was a widow, or a widow. Ubachsa, and she started to cry, and she was screaming out, she wanted to approach the Taz, she wanted to access the Taz. And he heard her crying, and he didn't turn to her. Said the Megalai Mukas to the Taz, because of this, that he didn't turn to this widow, and Shemayim was awakened on him. Because he had closed his ears from listening to the cry of a widow of a gazrel of Cherim. And in Shemayim, they were gozer on the Taz Cherim. So he said, I knew about this Cherim because the Megalei Mukas is privy to what happens in Shemayim. So in this world, nobody knew about it, but the Megalei Mukas knew. So he said, I couldn't give you Shalom because you were in Cherim. Until the days of the Cherim were over. This is not the end of the story. Amr Hataz. What do you want from me? This is not the first time. She came to me day after day after day after day. And he's crying, she's crying about her son who's sick. I can't help her. Because what can I do? She wants of me something that is not in my capacity to do for her. I know what she wants. She has come to me about this in the past, and I tried to explain to her, I cannot help you as much as I may want to. I cannot help you. What did you want from me? What did Shemayim want from me? Listen to this. You know what they wanted you to do? Turn around and look at her. Just to listen to her. And to take part in her pain. That's what they wanted from you in Shemaim. Not to help her. Sometimes you can't help a person. But to listen to a person. To carry a person's burden. To let a person know that they're not alone in the world. Because of this, it was nigzar on you, in Shemaim. Says the Hilgatasha Rabbi Harilan of Musar Naira. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome Musar. At Kami Yishla Adam Laizar, how a person has to be careful. Shaloilis Alim. Don't overlook things. Don't overlook things. Don't overlook things. Don't overlook things. Chavra, I want to tell you, I had a very unfortunate situation of being in a hospital for a reason that I'm not going to divulge in this forum right now. Baruch Hashem, everything's okay. But I had to spend yesterday morning a large portion of it in the hospital, in the emergency room many hours. And while I was there trying to be of assistance for somebody else, me and a couple of chaver that were there at that time heard screaming, 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 a hoarse cry coming from behind one of the curtains, screaming and screaming and screaming, and it's not stopping. And it means that nobody's paying attention to what's going on over here. So without railing against Israel and the Israeli culture and the Israeli attitudes and so on and so forth, or the nature of an overworked emergency room, everybody's very busy and so on and so forth. At a certain point, it's like, if forget about, I don't care who this person is, it's humanitarian not to allow a person to stay in a bed screaming on top of his lungs without anybody helping. So him and I went over to this person, we pulled aside the curtain and here before us is an 88 year old Holocaust survivor screaming on the top of his lungs in Yiddish, ich will nicht leben, ich will nicht leben, I don't want to live, I don't want to live, screaming on top of his lungs. We stood there likely for a half hour, just stroking his hands. I was talking to him a little bit in Yiddish, whatever I can. Where are you from? He's from Romania. He's from Romania. I heard afterwards, because I had to leave early, I had to teach, but the, chef, the Yid that stayed there said that his family came afterwards. And they told him a little bit of his story. This person saw his mother shot in front of his eyes when he was a little child. Rahman al grew up in Romania by the Nazis in Machshem Amazichram is a person who lost everything, who picked himself up and moved to Eretz Yisrael, built a business, fought in three wars, a war hero. And over here, he's laying in an emergency room bed, screaming on top of his lungs, the ain't called the ain't Do you know what would have been 
if me and this person would not have listened, we wouldn't simply have been guilty of not listening and not paying attention to another person's sorrow. We would have been guilty of gazelle. That's what we would have been guilty of. And I think that anybody who didn't listen to that and anybody who didn't think for a second, hey, you know something, maybe it's worth actually stopping to hand out all the food to everybody. Maybe go over and just you know, find out like what's going on with this person. Gzela. Gzela. And a Kodesh Baruch will be mechaper on them. And Be'ez HaShem, everybody's growing and everybody's trying to do what they can. And, and we're all, you know, we're, we're, we're all imperfect. And I, I, not we're all, I'm imperfect just as the next person. We're all trying. That's called Gezel. And Chazi Hashem, I was able to be there. And me and this Yid were, were able to be there. We weren't even there for that. We were there for something completely different, which is a Sipur Aroch in and of itself. The reason why we were there is insane. But beyond that, we were, able to, we were able to stand there and hold somebody's hand. Could I help him? I don't know. I didn't. He, he thought he was in America. I'm saying the person was yeah, dementia of some I don't know. He, he, didn't, he was so disoriented. He didn't know where he was. I can't help him. I'm not a doctor. I don't know what he needed. I don't know where he came from. I don't know where he went. They thought I was his family. The nurses came over to me they, and they started asking me questions. I said, I don't know who this person is. Just because I stood there and held his hand, I'm his family member now. I'm a human. I hope to be human. And to not do that is gazelle. Never. So Chazi Hashem, you know, this is what it is, Chever, to be able to have our eyes and ears open to the purpose for why we were put into this world. Not for our own little Inyanim, to say, I am here, Lesherut, I'm here to serve. And the form of that service is multifaceted. To have our eyes and ears wide open to say, if I can be there for somebody, in whatever way, in whatever way that I can. This is the reason that we were sent to this world. And to refrain from this and to hold back from this is gezel mamish. In addition to everything else, it is but it's gezel. Or rather, one step ahead. Again, I couldn't help him, but I could listen to him. I could listen to him and I could respect him. And I can tell him, like I told him, it's a, it's a schus for me to stand here in your presence which of course it was, and of course it is. And to give him strength, you have a say there, you have a say there. This is a good place. He was so scared. As a person who fought in three wars and went through the Holocaust, he was petrified, he was shaking, didn't know what was going on. I couldn't help him, but I could listen to him. In a matzah where we can listen to the cave lave, to the heartbroken nature of people's stories. You don't need to have the money to be able to help the person standing at the door, but you can listen to his story. You can give a person a hug. And it's real, it's real, it's real. It's real. You think it's a joke, it's stupid, you know, okay, but you didn't give him money, but you gave him life. The Ramam says more important than the money you give a person is the smile with which you give it to them. And you strengthen him. If we withhold this from people, this is gezel. That we should have been strengthening him with. And here we come to the end. If a person is going to get angry, they remove all holiness from a person in a state of anger. That's stealing from the chiyas. That he should have channeled into Torah and tefillah. A clip on bringing into a different place for the Chena Rabbi Zara Kaddish, Kalakayas, the measure that the, the Zara Kaddish says that in anybody who gets angry, Ki ilu oyved, Avid Zara, Ki umoyser, Sachia Shalai, okay, a clip of a chain, him on the Mavala's man, but Varm Batail, and wasting time, Harry Goizala says man, that's stealing, it's not wasting time, it's stealing time because it's not our time to waste, it's God's time, it's the Nishama's time, and so wasting time is the same thing as wasting somebody else's something because not yours, it's not mine, and so it's stealing. So we call it wasting somebody else's thing, but that's thievery. Time is precious. Every breath is precious. What a privilege to be in this world. There's so much to do. We can do so much. We're going to do so much. It's like robbery. Robbery. To waste words. 
Just stam. It's wasting, wasting, wasting. There's a little bit of your soul that goes out of you every time you speak. And to make the cheshben, again, I don't want to be mekatrik, and I'm predominantly speaking to myself, but a person that makes a cheshben, we have this thing called WhatsApp. In my opinion, there is no reason for a Jew to be on a WhatsApp group that's not specifically related either to family, to chesed, or to Tyra. To be on a politics group, place where just stam the whole day back and forth fighting about things. What's going on here? Is it bitul's man? What a bitul's man? These are tools that are given to us to utilize for holiness. To be a Jew is not a simple thing. We're a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction. We're a generation that's like the, like the phoenix rose up from the ashes. Not to, to waste our time. Not to waste our time. We carry six million on our shoulders. We are charged with rebuilding Yiddishkeit. And we did that institutionally, but now it's up to you and me to bring the soul back into it, to bring the heart back into it, to bring body and soul together. We can't be wasting our time with Shtuyot. It's Gezel. It's not ours. Life is not ours. Nishama Shanasata B. Shanasata B. You gave it to It's not mine. It's yours. There's, there's life force that leaves when a person wastes time just speaking in manities. This steals away from the, from, the, from the realm of Kedusha. And it brings it to the other side. You can't mix oil and water. If you ever tried, you can't mix oil and water. A mouth that speaks to our metalim cannot mix, cannot be then used in a proper way to speak words of, of tyrant feeling. And here we're coming to the end. I know it's heavy. I know it's heavy. I know it's heavy, but it's real. If a person focuses all the person's mind and efforts into the Indian of business, that even at the time of learning a davening in the koyach, he already used all of his brain power and energy, and he has no element of being able to devote not to learn because he davened too much. Harry who goes that's stealing from learning. And the same thing the If a person only learns. And because of that, he cuts corners and davening. It doesn't say carbonus because he got a comes late so that it can. Leaves early. Harry goes a and because there's a time for davening and there's a time for learning. And if a person invests too much energy in one to the detriment of the other, that's gezel. Anything that a person says, ah, that's not important because I'm busy with something else. But it comes the time to blow shofar, and a person is busy doing the dafiomi because tamatar can kulam, like the Rosh Hashanah Pinkus writes, and that darm teshar mitfila. If a person pushes off his mantfila because he's too busy learning, that's time that belongs to tefila. If a person is supposed to be learning and a person is too busy davening, the same thing also applies. This mantra lechud, who is mantfila lechud, both have their own individual times for themselves. And Yiddishkeit needs to be broad. There's so much to do. There's so much we're doing and we're good. And the chas not to allow any of these sharp words to be mekatrik and Israel who are holy and pure and trying the best that they can, and mom is doing the best that they can with the tools that they're given. Chas v'shalom, not to make this sound as if Jews are doing things that they're not supposed to do. Am Yisrael is lichtig, we're shining, we're brilliant, we're wondrous. It was through gezel that the Mabel came to the world, of course, he finishes with a positive thing. The opposite will also be true. That when a person guards himself or herself from the sin of Gezel, not just again in the classical sense of it, in the Indian of taking something that doesn't belong to us, but Gezel, the Klali, when we call Nidnu, the Ava Gezel, any tiny element of thievery that might exist in any form of misbehavior, 
the Kayim Bezeres HaOlam, were mamish fortifying the world. Because if that's what brought the Mabel to destroy the world, now imagine what kind of fortification you and I are doing when we are conscious of this. And when we do everything in our power to mamish invest our kochos to make sure that we're not stealing away from who we are. And what we can do with the other people that we can help in whatever way that we can, even if just by listening to them and holding their hand. And it brings tremendous shefa to the world. This was Shal so they were reading already. We're going to become sources of blessing called Kula completely filled with blessing. May your source be filled with blessing. Send upon us tremendous, tremendous, tremendous flow of life force and holiness and bracha from the heavenly storehouses of blessing above. Amen. Cain, Yehi Ratzin. Chevra, mamish, a privilege. I just want to reiterate with the last minute that we have left. The point over here is not to make us feel bad. The point over here is not to, you know, bang us over the head with this hammer and I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize, I thought I was bad enough and it turns out that I was actually stealing on top of everything. That's not the point here. The point is but to be able to be aware of this now, we can do a lot, we're going to do a lot, we're doing phenomenally well and may we all be mischazic together, all of Am Yisrael, to continue on this trajectory, to stay conscious, focused, it's bigger than me, it's bigger than you, it's all of us together. It's all of us together. What a privilege. Mamish, what a privilege. Okay, so Chavar, we're going to stop here. Thank you so, so much for joining. Mamish, it's just to learn with you. It really means the world to me that you're a part of this, and I wish you the most wonderful Shabbos. Be sure to check out Meaningful Minute for another tire. It's not this one. Another tire from the Tasha Rebbe in short form on Instagram, Facebook, Meaningful Minute app, and WhatsApp as well. If you're interested and you have my contact, you can reach out for the uh, sign up. Uh, uh, link, but I posted it to the mini, uh, to the LPI status as well. And Ms. Yata Deshmaya, we should only hear wonderful, good, phenomenal news. Thank you so much for joining. Wishing everybody a most beautiful Shabbos. Kaltiv Chever, thank you so, so much. Thanks for joining. All the best. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos. Thank you so much.